I did my Montessori training over 20 years ago, graduating in 1998. My sole intention at that time was I wanted to be a teacher. I didn't have children of my own yet at the time, but I loved being around children and I wanted to be able to work in a preschool. Now I happened to read that there was an open house being held and a teach about a teacher training program and I decided I'm going to go. I didn't know anything about Montessori and can you believe I didn't even know Montessori was a person. That's how ignorant I was at the time. But little did I know, on that day in September of 1997, my life was going to change forever. After this 30-minute info session, I made one of the biggest decisions of my life. I decided to sign up for a 12-month training program, which meant that I would have to stay away from my husband for the duration of this course. It was challenging on more levels than I can say, but by far, it's been the greatest gift that I've given myself. I could go on and on about the lessons I learned and the benefits that I gained, but it all boils down to one thing. Through this training, and as I continued to work in this field, I grew to become a true Montessori guide, and that is what I cherish the most. Picture a conventional classroom. The adult is at the front of the room and typically there will be a board and the teacher is telling the children what to do and giving out knowledge. In contrast to this, the adult or the teacher in the Montessori prepared environment is never in one place. You will find them among the children, guiding them on how to connect with the work and use different, different materials in different ways to make discoveries of their own and build their own knowledge base. For this reason, the Montessori teacher is referred to as a Montessori guide and not a teacher. Becoming a Montessori guide is a journey that takes patience, passion, and desire. There are so many underlying lay layers that we don't see just by peeping into a Montessori classroom. Now here are six qualities of the Montessori guide. Quality number one, humility. First and foremost, we must learn to approach our children with humility. I don't know about you, but I grew up in an environment where the parents laid down the law and that's just how things were. One of the most common phrases, because I said so. Why do I have to do this? Because I said so. The adults are solely in charge of telling us what to do. No one ever asked us what we wanted to do. No one was interested in following our interests or giving us the space to learn. But we know that a Montessori guide approaches every child with humility. We never tell the children what to do, but we ask them, can I show you how to build the pink tower? Would you like to learn how to do this pouring activity? When I first learned this, I was taken aback. I was really surprised, really, this is how we speak to children? But I went on to learn that each and every child has their own interests and they have their own individual potential for life. And what we are here to do is to respect them, honor their spirit and help them to reach their very best. Quality number two, a good observer. Now this is a quality that I personally struggled with. I signed up for this course to teach. And what does observing have to do with it? This was my question. And when I performed uh, my first observations, when I had to do my first observations on children, I performed terribly. In fact, my grades were so poor that my tutor said, gave it back to me unmarked and said, you know what, this isn't even worthy of an F. That's how badly I did. My tutor said to me, I want you to observe from your heart. Don't think of this as an assignment. But look and tell me, what is your child showing you? What do they need from you? Where do they want to go next? How will you follow this child if you don't observe and you don't get the answers to these questions? And that's when things took a turn for me. I observed from a whole new perspective and outlook and then I understood the child and I learned so much. Quality number three, a link to the environment. One thing I keep repeating to my students is that you are the one who's going to connect your child to the materials, 
you are the catalyst. Over and over, I have teachers who tell me, but they don't want to work with the material. They just run around. They don't do anything. That responsibility lies on you to make that connection. We have these beautiful materials and we have the child's materials, child. Now, there's not going to be a reaction until the Montessori guide brings them together. How do we do this? We present the materials with love and enthusiasm and at the right time. Not when I think the child needs to learn it, but when the child shows me that this is what they're ready for. Through my observations, I've learned that this is the right time. Now they're ready. Now they want it. And then I will have success. Otherwise, what happens is that I look at my list and I say, well, okay, you know, it's time for me to present the broad stare. And I go forward, but the child is just not interested. They're not connecting. So I have to observe and wait for that sign. Quality number four, a role model. There is a saying that goes, good behavior is caught, not taught. Our children are always looking up to us and copying everything that we do, whether it's at home or whether it's in school. This means that we have to be mindful of the way that we conduct ourselves. How do we speak to the children in our care? What tone of voice do we use? Do we say please and thank you to them? And when we are around them, how do we handle the materials? Are we holding them with love and with care and with respect? These are the kinds of things that we need to be aware of and we have to conduct ourselves mindfully so that the children will also model this. Quality number five, a growing person. One thing I learned as a student was to keep a weekly journal. Every Friday, I would write down just one thing that I felt worked for me, that was successful. And I would also write down one thing that I was not too happy about. It could be anything from the past week. It could be a presentation that went well. It could be material that I put out that was, you know, the children were uh, loving to use. Um, I never went back and read any of these again. But by writing it down, it gave me the opportunity to self-reflect and look back on my actions over the past week. When I write it down, it becomes tangible. It becomes real. And the good things got even better. The things that were not so good, they slowly disappeared and faded away. So I strongly urge that whether you're doing this at home or whether you're doing this at school, keep that journal and be able to self-reflect. And through that, you're going to grow. It is a known fact that most of the successful people in this world, they have all kept a journal. So by keeping a journal, it gives you a chance to reflect on your successes and your failures, and you grow from it. For me, it was something I continued to do as a teacher, then as a parent, a supervisor, and now a trainer. We have to be willing to learn and to grow, no matter how much we've learned or how, how far we've come, there's still, we can still be even better. Skill number six, faith and patience. I cannot tell you how many times I have repeated the words faith and patience to myself over and over again throughout my career as a Montessori guide. Faith that the child will reveal himself to you and patience that we need to wait for this to happen in its own time. Time and time again, I would face a situation where a child just didn't want to do anything. They would not connect with the materials. They'd be all over the place. And at the end of a taxing day, I would remind myself, Jenny, faith and patience. Have the faith. Be patient. And sure enough, the child would come around. Sometimes in a week, sometimes in two, sometimes even a month. Once we had two children in our classroom, and every morning they would come to the classroom and they would go to the book corner, and all they wanted to do was grab any random book, sit together, and just giggle. They would look at the pictures, they weren't really reading, but they would giggle to themselves and they were having fun. Myself and my teachers, we would approach them and try and lure them to do the materials. Can I teach you how to do this? This is really fun. Would you like to do something new? Can I show you something? And every day, their answer would be no. But every day we would remind ourselves and approach them with humility and ask them, would they like to do something else? And when they said no, we respected that. 
they were not disturbing anybody they were not using the materials harmfully yet at the end of the day i would question myself how am i going to complete my timetable how will my lesson plan get complete how will i try what will i tell the parents how am i going to be finished with what i have to teach this child they're going to fall behind there were so many questions and a part of me was tempted to stop them and say no let's go and do something else but deep inside i knew that i have to have the faith and the patience and after 10 days and they felt like 10 long days they finally got to this this experience out of their system and they came to look for me asking specifically for something to work with so my faith and patience paid off i can give you dozens of similar examples that i've had over the years just like this one i had a similar experience like this with my nephew recently i felt that he just wasn't connecting to the environment that i had set up for him as homeschooling but i observed him and i guided him and sure enough something finally clicked now imagine it's been 20 years that i've been doing this and still i have to remind myself to have faith and patience being a montessori guide is no small task we aren't here to deliver knowledge our roles and responsibilities have many layers and go much deeper much is required from us that's for sure is it worth it without a doubt yes becoming a montessori guide gave me the skills to be a better educator it gave me the ability to have richer relationships with my sons built on mutual respect and my character and personality evolved into one that has a deep understanding of children and what they need from us as adults so i hope this has inspired you to look within and nurture the skills that you need to become the perfect montessori guide for your students and for your children remember to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel we will keep coming back to you with more montessori secrets until we meet again have a beautiful day